BoxingBoys.com here with the champ, Bravo, hey. Ron Brand. What's up? How you doing, champ? Oh man, I'm doing real good, man. Just came off the mountain, feeling uh, feeling really good, man. Feeling strong. Just did five miles at 8,500 feet elevation, Mount Charleston here in Vegas. Man, I saw you. I was behind you the whole time. You kept up the same pace the entire time. What is that like? Because any fighter that trains here. You know, they Mount Charleston is a must for camp, yeah. but you know, how are you able to keep that pace? Um, you know, we that was my that was my eighth or ninth time doing it this camp alone, so it's just uh I mean it's a mental game, you know, you have to realize it does it, it, it translates when you when you when you get into the fight. So it's a lot of visualization gets done when you're when you're when you're running. For me anyways. So right. I do a lot of visualization. So I mean I, I I have a like a pure understanding that, you know, if you keep this pace up here, you're gonna be able to keep that pace up in the fight. And you know you have that sense of security when when you're you know in the middle of the fight toward the end of the fight in you know, eighth, ninth, tenth in the championship rounds. Yes, sir. And you kind of feel those lungs starting to burn. You know, like you push through it when you're running up a mountain. You can push through it and doing something you've been doing most of your life. So you know it's a uh, definitely that sense of like mental security. Absolutely. Now, obviously, you're in camp July the twelfth. In Osaka, Japan, correct? Osaka, That's right, Osaka, Japan. Osaka, Japan for the uh, Ryota Murata uh, rematch. That's right. That's right. Now, you were the underdog coming into the first fight, at least in the sports books. Um, came out, in my opinion, dominated and took the title from him in dominating fashion. Um, now, you had a fight in February took it back home, took it to Minnesota, mm -hmm. uh, looked very impressive. Thanks. He hasn't had a fight. He's going straight into the rematch. That's the right. first fight was back in October. That's right. What advantages do you think uh, you have headed into the rematch in his home country? You know, uh, I feel like I have a lot of advantages, A, being the fact that, you know, I've, I've had work on the in-between. You know, I, I've gotten to make the corrections. You know, the last time that, that we fought, I feel like he, he mentally broke and, you know, toward the end of the fight. So, you know, for him to go right back into a fight with the person that broke him, you know, whether or not it's in his home country, he's going to have that on the back of his mind. You know, he's uh, he brought up retirement three times when I went to Tokyo for the press conference. He said he was going, he thought about retiring after the fight. He said how he still may retire after this fight and how retirement was on his mind for a long time. And to me, that just lets me know, you know, if you give him a reason, he'll stop in the middle of the fight. You yeah. know, he'll, he, that hunger has kind of left him, you know, because it's never something that's ever, you know, came across my mind before. So, I mean, it's, it may be easy to chalk it up to maybe, you know, a, a translation error. Maybe it means something different where he's coming from. But anytime you say that fighting is not an option for you anymore, or some fighting is something you're not thinking about anymore, I mean, there's, some, there's always somebody coming up that, no, that feels exactly opposite. Absolutely. Now, um, you've been in foreign territory before the Absolutely. WSS yes. uh, tournament. Obviously, that wasn't your weight class. Uh, weight class came up uh, short in that one. Um, mm -hmm. So you've been in front of the, uh, you know, the rival home crowd. Definitely. You've been you've been the, you know, the outsider before. Is there any pressure going into his home country? Um, any worries at all? Yeah, no, I think it was, uh, I, I spoke to David Hay the other day, and he said, you know, I've won all of my, my titles uh, outside of his country, you know, you have to you have to just feel comfortable in the fact that the ring is your home, you know, he, it's up to him, I mean, he's he's kind of proven the fact that his greatest potential is in front of his people, it's up to me to prove that I bring my, my, my greatest potential with me wherever I go, so I, I don't feel any pressure in order to do this or, or that, you know, it's, uh, mm -hmm. I just, I'm just confident in, in being myself, the same person I'm in during training camp is, you know, it's the same size ring. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm feeling really comfortable and very confident. Absolutely. Now, I know uh, the way you carry yourself, the way uh, that you are as a person and as a champion, that uh, you don't overlook any opponent. Absolutely. Um, so not to look past Murata, but uh, obviously right now the middleweight division is, uh, is very hot. Um, Certainly. Some would say arguably the biggest name. I think Canelo is the biggest name in boxing right yeah, now. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, you know, he holds three of the four titles, mm -hmm. just unified uh, defeating Danny Jacobs in May. What were your thoughts on that fight? I thought that Canelo won it uh, yeah. 
um, I wouldn't say convincingly, but convincingly enough. I thought yeah. that um, it was a close enough fight, but not close enough to call it um, a robbery no, or anything of no. that sort. A lot of people thought Danny won. What were your thoughts on the fight? I thought that Canelo definitely won the fight. Um, I just thought he was he was better on that night. I think that you know Jacobs is right to probably move up to 68 now. I think it might be a better suit weight class for him. Um, I just think that yeah, I mean if you're gonna look at um, Canelo's probably the the highly most recognized with the, to be the middleweight champion. Right. You know so that is 100 percent always what you what I want. That's why I want to fight. But you know none of that happens unless I beat Murata first. So you know as long as I continue to win. You know, these, these huge opportunities are going to be there. You know, me having the WBA regular title will put me in a position to, to be a mandatory for him. But, Absolutely. again, he's got three other mandatory or two other mandatories as well. But, you know, like, I, I will definitely push my claim. And, I, and that's 100%. You know, everyone wants to know who the toughest dude on the block is. And I think that it's great for the boxing fans to have a unified uh, world champion. So you can say that is the middleweight champion, you know, not a middleweight champion. Right now, I'm very happy to be a champion, but you know, I don't think that there there should only be one, and you know, every champion should strive to be that one person. Absolutely. Now, um, just in a few weeks, the other middleweight champion, WBO middleweight champion of the world, uh, Demetrius uh, Andre, yeah. uh, he's fighting Selecki in his hometown. A lot of people are overlooking Selecki. I think it's actually going to be a close fight. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be a good fight. Selecki really impressed me against Jacobs, even though, you know, he was definitely down and he was beaten in the Jacobs fight. But, I mean, he showed a lot of skill, a lot of, a lot of grit. So, I mean, I, I have Andrade, you know, probably winning the fight on the, on the scorecards. But I think that uh, Selecki is going to have a good showing. And I'm not counting him completely out. But Selecki's definitely, he's, he's a tough tough fighter absolutely gave charlo a good fight uh, yes gave charlo a good fight as well. uh charlo yeah. will be fighting um actually the same night he'll be yeah. fighting in his hometown uh against brandon adams yes. um he has the wbc interim i believe or yeah, the diamond, silver, diamond is this, no, you know one, one, one of them but yeah you know he's he's also been in that position to fight canelo for a while um how do you see that fight play out? I know that you've never worked with Jamal, but you've done work with his brother Jamal. Absolutely. How do you see how do you see the the fight against Brandon Adams play out? And where do you see Jamal uh, Jamal's position in the middleweight division? Because yeah. he's been there, but you know he hasn't had that opportunity. You know, I'm uh, I'm interested to see because I mean, of course I'm gonna pick Charlo in that fight, but it's, I mean a lot of it has to do with the fact that I don't know much about Brandon Adams. Of course, I watched him on the Contender series. But, uh, you know, I haven't seen him against that top-level competition. Everyone, from what I've heard, he punches extremely hard. He, he's very mobile and act, he's very mobile. You know, he's got good athleticism. So, I mean, I'm not expecting, you know, a super surprise or a shock win. But, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what he's going to look like at the top level. But in terms of Charlo, um, he's there. Like, you know, it's just it's, it's a matter of getting the opportunity. You know, the... One of the biggest problems with, with having one of the biggest names in the sport in your weight class is he calls a lot of shots. You know, he fights who he wants to fight. You know, of course, Triple G wants to fight him. Um, I every mean, other does champion he? wants to fight him. Uh, 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 Triple G, of course. I think a Triple G definitely wants to fight him. Do I think that Canelo wants to give Triple G that shot? I don't think so. But not as think as he's scared of him. I just don't think he likes him. Um, I don't think he, he likes him as a person. I think he's, you know, he's in a position where... He makes so much money and brings so much money to the sanctioning bodies, to the promoters, that he gets to make a lot of calls. You know, he gets, he's in that position where he can say, I want to fight this person, and they'll make it happen. You know, I was uh, truly impressed by, not necessarily Canelo, by Golden Boy, because I felt that a lot of fights that fans have wanted from Canelo in the past have took longer than yeah. we would have liked. And I feel a lot of that was a promoter decision um that said i was truly impressed that he came off of his suspension straight into the triple g rematch sure. brought the fight forward yes then moves up in weight to what most of us believe would be uh domination against rocky field and then it was but the fact that he went up in weight against a guy that was five six inches taller than sure. him Absolutely. And did that, and then comes back to unify against Danny Jacobs. That truly impressed me yeah. that he would take the Danny Jacobs fight right yes. after. You know, he's a he's a champion. You know, 
I, I respect everything that he does, you know, but the fact of the matter is it's kind of your responsibility when you're a champion. You have to have those big fights. But, I mean, for in order for him to go up in weight and beat Rocky Fielding, that, that's that's the really impressive part to me is he, you know, he decided to take that chance, and he's in the point where he's taking legacy fights opposed to just taking fights that he feels are, you know, comfortable and he knows it'll win. Correct. You know, he's taking fights that are going to add to his legacy. You know, he's, he's getting 68 belts and I mean, I've heard rumor of him potentially doing fights at 75 against some guys, you know. Again, that could be a lot of rumors, but these are these are things that are, you know, he's building his brand for not just now, but, you know, for a much later on in life. Right. Cre- know, creating that yeah, legacy absolutely, that most, absolutely. most fighters, it seems like nowadays, don't really care about. That's true. Yeah, a lot of fighters don't don't seem to. You know, it's, it's a business for a lot of guys, which is understood. But I think once you kind of get that financial freedom, um, it really opens you up to be able to take these fights. Because now, you know, you if you're smart with your money, you, you can make enough, you know, where, right. where you know, it, it's, it's going to affect the rest of your life. You know, which is, you know, you should get to a point once you become a champion that, you know, you, you should set yourself up for later. And then at that point, you're set up. Now, there's there's no excuse for you not to, to take these bigger fights because now it's, you know, this is this is what you've built for for your entire life. You know, why would you not fight everybody else who's also been doing it their entire life? And they've, they've, you know, everybody wants to be number one. Absolutely. So with that said, I mean, obviously you've been put in a in a great position with the first Murata fight came Absolutely. coming out victorious. Mm-hmm. I I am a little intrigued, honestly, though, because uh, that led to um, a deal with Top Rank with ESPN. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm intrigued as far as now, you know, you're making the money that you deservingly should be making. Uh, I'm sure you're, you know, you're getting. Uh, compensated very well for the Murata rematch with that said you know you're gaining that financial freedom what would you like to do like before you leave this sport like well what what is Rob Brandt's goal as far as before leaving the sport it, I think you know, my goal should be what, what everyone every other champion's goal is is, is to collect all of the belts because you know it is very nice to be a champion I want to be the champion of the world undisputed undisputed so when people say you know who's the middleweight champion I don't want to be well there's this person this person this person right. this person right you know, no you want to be that person you know you want to, it want, shouldn't be a second guess second question it's just say oh yeah that's Rob Branch the way that Terrence Crawford did at 140, Oofy. and what Usyk did at cruiserweight. Clarissa Shields just did Clarissa it. Clarissa Shields did it at middleweight. Yeah. Wherever she wants to do it at, the way I see it. You right. Know? So she's uh, yeah. it's funny they just announced her next fight. She's going down in weight once again to wow. 154. It is going to be for a vacant title, and I think the ultimate goal with that is to get Cecilia Brockes to come out, come up the undisputed welterweight champ uh-huh. to come up yes. and meet at 147. I'd love that. I'd love that. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't see any female fighter. I mean, she's. I think that Clarissa Shields has a definitely opportunity as long as she keeps her head on right, which she seems to be doing, to, to, um, to retire with her. Oh, I mean, there's she's so many leaps and bounds above everybody else. Um, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that you know she's the forefront. Like she's the only you know female in that weight class that I've really, I've really kept up to. Right. Um, and of course there was Christina Hammer that she just, I mean, she she put a beating on Christina Hammer. I mean, she beat her convincingly in my opinion. So um, I, I don't see anything for her standing in her way, but um, I'm a fan. That's what it comes Absolutely. down to. I'm, I'm just definitely a fan. Well, Rob, I uh, truly appreciate uh, allowing me to come up, uh, watch you get that road to work in uh, this beautiful Saturday hey, morning. I'm just, I'm just shocked that you came out. Man. Oh you're, man, you're at the house by five o'clock in the morning. That's uh, that's, yeah. imp- that's impressive. Five in the that's morning, impressive. Yes, uh, yeah, so, well, thanks, champ. A message to the fans uh, for your upcoming title defense, July the 12th in Osaka, Japan. You know, I just appreciate it. If people uh, tuned in, uh, Osaka will be on an ESPN Plus app. And it'll be played on ESPN throughout the day. Um, if you're just trying to give me some support and, uh, you know, bring, the, bring the, the title back to the U.S. Absolutely. Title defense, the champ. Uh, give your yeah. social media for the fans, champ. Um, find me on Instagram at, at Robert Brandt USA. as the same on Twitter and uh, Robert Brandt on, on, on Facebook.
Thank you, brother. Absolutely, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate the you. video. Feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon.com backslash the Boxing Voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, Entitled, Betting Shows. The list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.